Hi, I'm Bronson Farr, a commercial and portrait photographer based in New York City. In this video, we're gonna dive into how best to bring out emotions and real expressions in your photography. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. First part of the question, I kind of like I wrote down some notes. I started um, with the Canon. I got my first Canon T3i. I graduated to a 7D. I also got the 70D. And at that time in my career, I was doing a lot of guerrilla style photography, um, known as wedding photography. Decided to get more into commercial photography and up my game from the 7D and the 70D to um, the Canon 5D Mark III. Most recently, I graduated to a mirrorless camera, the R5. With the Canon R5, I absolutely love the eye detection settings that it has. Um, it allows me to be able to direct my subject um, and not worry about the focus so much. I'm talking about they can have a mask on, they can have um, a hair or a hand in front of their, their face obscuring what you think um, the detection would, would pick up, but it is perfect every time and it's really helped with my workflow. There is certainly a duality within my work. I love to photograph um, loud, rambunctious, um, joyful, empowered people. But I also love to um, capture more pensive and thoughtful moments as well. Um, like in this photo here, um, you'll see that my colors are a little bit more desaturated. The composition I really love of this photo as well, where it's really all about um, nature, being in a public space. I uh, love his wardrobe as well, and just the way that the trees kind of make your eyes go to the subject. In this particular photo, I use a Canon 70 to 200 to get the compression that you see in the photo. What I mean by compression is like the, that bokeh or that creaminess in the background that helps the subject to really stand, um, stand out. I also use a lens attachment called a star filter to get those um, hazy highlights that you see on all the subject's um, body. Returning to themes like joy and expression, um, you'll find that a lot in my work, and that's because I am a pretty joyous person. So in this photo, I wanted to create something that was bold, striking, that had a little bit of movement in it as well. I also wanted to um, highlight how beautiful the sky looked, and so I used a wide-angle lens, a 24 to 70, to um, capture the scene, and it allowed my subject to get really close to to the camera as well. You can see I invoked a little bit of color theory here um, using reds and yellows and blue, some primary colors, are those primary colors? Some primary colors. And I use a bit of shutter drag to create that motion that the viewer sees right around his um, ankle and, and hand. Creating emotional or joyous imagery doesn't always have to be through the lighting that you choose. It can also be through the wardrobe, through the props, or what you decide to put in the foreground of your images. Like this one right here. This was a lifestyle shoot um, a few years ago, and I decided to use um, various materials that I found on set to shoot through, and that's where you get that kind of orange blur in the corner there that really helps your eye to see the entire frame. Uh, you can see that they have such great expressions and um, my Sigma 1.4 lens caught their great expressions so crisply. Lighting is so, so important with creating um, great portraiture. I think that um, a photograph is 90% um, the lighting that you use. And so you'll see in my work, a lot of the soft, more pensive looks are either done with soft natural light or um, modified uh, strobes to make look like natural light. And then you'll also see in my work, some of the more striking and bold um, images are gonna be maybe um, flash with a lot of shadows, a lot of like everything is bright and colorful. I really love eye contact. Having your subject look directly into the camera creates such an intense um, sense of intimacy for me that I, I love having my subjects do, do that. 
Inversely, I also love them to look away from the camera. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll shoot through a doorway or through a plant, giving more of a voyeuristic point of view that's equally as emotional as someone looking directly into the camera as well. And then finally, in the post-processing um, portion of, of making a portrait, I always pay attention to the way that my eye moves throughout the photo. Is it interesting to my eye? Um, do I think it's gonna be interesting to my viewers? Um, and I really rely on how it makes me feel um, before I send it out into the world. There are a few different ways that I like to get my subjects to um, showcase authentic emotions and it's really gonna have to do with their comfortability with you. Be involved in the casting process as much as you can. There you'll be able to uh, build a relationship of trust, a background of relatedness that I really lean on when I'm directing my talent. Another great way to um, create an environment that is open and easily achievable of these authentic emotions is really the people that are on set with you. Your team is an extension of you. And if you want your subject to be at ease, you yourself have to be at ease. You have to give that energy. So the people around me really do uh, make a huge difference on set. What I intend my audience to get out of my photograph is a lot of empathy, whether that is empathy towards the joyous, empowered photos that they see of mine or the more pensive and thoughtful images that they see. I think that's because that's who I am as a person. Um, those are the two sides of my personality. I wanna keep making beautiful portraiture. I want to keep telling those stories of joy and empowerment and pensiveness and thoughtfulness as well. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, find my work on Instagram, bronson.photo, or check me out online, bronsonfar.com. Cut, that was good. <laughs> that was good.